AI agents don't fail on their own, but they obey bad instructions. Let's fix that. So every AI agent demo looks incredible. It plans, it reasons, it uses tools. It's like you're watching the future happen. And then you go try to build one yourself and suddenly it forgets what it's doing. It spams tools out. It confidently emails the wrong person. It screws up a task you could have done yourself in five minutes and somehow makes it even harder to undo. So if you've had that experience, here's an important thing I want to say right up front. That's not model failure. It's probably not even a tooling failure. It's a mismatch between how humans think and how agents execute, which is a very important distinction because an AI agent is not a coworker or a junior employee or even really an assistant. An AI agent is a loop that does exactly what you've told it to do. Whatever your instructions say, that's what it's going to do especially the parts that you maybe don't realize are there or are a little redundant or are conflicting with one another. And that's the kind of problem we're going to deal with today. So if you're into thinking about AI beyond the demos, maybe what actually works, what doesn't, and why, go ahead, like, and subscribe to today's video. I'd really appreciate it. This channel is about understanding the systems and not so much chasing hype. I definitely get excited, but here we want to bring it together for practical solutions. So let's start off by talking about what people think an agent is, because that's not always what an agent really is. So here's the fantasy version. Let's start there. You describe a goal. The agent figures out the steps. It adapts when something goes wrong, and it understands what you meant. But part of why this is fantasy is because of marketing. AI agents became a hot term very fast, and a lot of marketing teams jumped on it, even when what they were offering wasn't really an agent, frankly. What started as a serious idea, systems that reason, plan, and act over time, got watered down into something much simpler, which is basically an automation workflow with an AI-shaped box sitting smack dab in the middle of it. So now, everything is an agent. A zap with a language model? Agent. A scheduled script with one decision point? Agent. A rules engine with a chat interface? Agent. And that blurring really matters because it kind of quietly reset expectations. People think they're buying judgment. Uh, what they're often getting, though, more is orchestration. And when those systems fail, it feels like AI is dumber than promised, when really the promise itself got stretched past what the system actually is, in my opinion. Because what most people want from agents is an automation. They want judgment. They want something that knows when not to act, something that understands trade-offs, something that recognizes when success technically happened, but the outcomes still suck for one reason or another. And that's where the mismatch begins. So we're gonna talk from here about real quick what an agent actually is. So let's ground this a bit. An AI agent today is usually a trigger, a prompt, a loop, some tools, and a stopping condition someone guessed would be reasonable. That's it. Nothing fancy. It's really a pretty simple process. They can be built by just about anyone. There's no native hierarchy of goals. There's no built-in sense of priority, though there maybe can be. And there's no understanding of consequences by the model itself. So when an agent fails, something important happens. It doesn't know it failed. And that's a problem. It only knows it produced output that looks like success. So if it says, I emailed the user and the email never went out, the model doesn't experience that as a lie. It's just a continuation that fit the pattern. This is why agents feel confident even when they're wrong sometimes. And this is why failure can sound polished and why deep. And this is where people often reach for the wrong fix. They add more tools, they add more memory, they add more context, which brings us to what is the real problem in all of this? And that's non-executable instructions, the real failure point. So most people think they're giving agents context, and what they're actually doing is more context dumping. Long system prompts, redundant instructions, contradictory goals, background information that doesn't even serve the final outcome. And here's where that reframe really matters, and that's that context dumping is not the same as context curation. More context is only better if the quality is there. 3,000 words that contradict themselves are worse than 10 clear bullet points. That's a thing to really understand when you're prompting agents or, frankly, anything else. This idea that you can just mass dump all of the texts and examples and, and, and it not be in an organized method and very carefully thought out step by step throughout to ensure 
that you're giving clear instructions is a thing that is a mistake I see everyone making. Uh, I've made it myself. That's why we're here, because I'm here to help you fix it, too. Here's a good way to think about it. You have a finite amount of compute allotted to every task you do. So each token the model spends trying to reconcile, conflicting instructions, redundant guidance, unclear priorities, that's compute it's not spending on your problem. It's spending it trying to figure out what in the hell you meant. So the easier it is for the model to understand what you're asking it to do, the more compute it can devote to doing that task well, which is why this matters so much. More words don't make instructions clearer, they make the failure harder to debug. And this is why agentic prompting actually matters, not as a trick so much, but just as a mindset in how you go about writing prompts for good agents. This is about learning to think a little less like a narrator and a little more like a systems designer. I think that's a really important distinction to make. So I'm gonna give you a few frames here that will make or break your agents and really help you dial that in the way you need to. Number one, agents can't just infer priority. When you say, help me manage my inbox intelligently, you've implied what matters most. You've implied what can wait when silence is better than action. But the agent has no idea which of those trade-offs you'd actually make, so it guesses. And when it guesses wrong, we blame the model, we blame the AI, we blame the tool, we blame everything except ourselves. And the fact is, the model wasn't confused. Your instructions were. It did what you told it. Number two, intent is not behavior. A lot of prompts describe what we want and not what the agent is allowed to do. You are proactive. You help me stay organized. You take initiative. These aren't rules. They're more like vibes, honestly. It, agents don't need personalities or other things like that. What they need is clear permissions and guidance. A single constraint, something simple, like you may suggest actions, but you may not execute them without confirmation. That does more work than three paragraphs of tone setting is ever going to do for you. You know, essentially, they need boundaries. And that's what your job is when prompting an agent to make it do the task that you want to see from it. Number three, and we talked about this a minute ago, context curation beats context dumping. Good context will serve the final goal, it'll remove ambiguity, and it doesn't contradict itself throughout. But bad context often does things like repeat itself in different wording. I see this all the time. It's one of the biggest things that causes problems. It introduces edge cases, but without any real guidance around those. It also tends to kind of flatten the importance to where it's not able to understand the priority, priority list you've given it. So language models don't automatically know what to ignore. You have to tell it. If you've emphasized everything, Nothing is emphasized. The fact is, it's all just going to blur together. And then when an agent goes off the rails, it's often not because it misunderstood you. It's because it understood everything equally and tried to do everything when, in fact, what it needed to do was one simple task. So let's talk about why adding more tools can make this worse. Now, this is where everything sort of is going to collapse together for you. When your instructions are vague, Adding tools doesn't make the agent smarter. You're not fixing problems. It just gives it more buttons to press. So tool use is less reasoning and more prediction, honestly. The model, it doesn't know when it, when it should act. It just knows when it can. This is what leads to things like tool spam, overconfidence. Uh, I've completed the task, theater. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and that gets so old. And I, I know that struggle. I've dealt with it myself. and It is really frustrating. But instead of fixing the root problem, we keep stacking more complexity up on top of it. We give agents more APIs with what humans really need are just better off ramps. So the missing layer, though, is still humans. And here's the quiet part people really don't love hearing. The best AI agents today aren't autonomous. They're boring, they're narrow, they're heavily supervised. They work when the scope is constrained, failure is cheap, a human is in the loop, and you know with a reasonable amount of exactness what you want to see in your results every single time. You know, if you need, you know, fluid decision making, it's trickier than what people seem to let on quite often. There's a deeper reason for that. If you don't know how you make decisions, you can't outsource them. That's what this all really boils down to. Agents expose a part of our thinking that as non-technicals, we've never had to really formalize before. And that's, that's uncomfortable, it's awkward, because specification is work, you know. 
So what you have to do is learn to think about your tasks more programmatically, and we're going to have another video on that here shortly. Uh, but the idea being that if you perform this task, you need to sit down and think about every step you take through that task. What matters? What are the decisions you make at each step? And we're going to go back through that, and we'll uh, in a later video, we will break down a few simple tasks that show you how we would make them more programmatic and where they would work like that. Um, but also, it's important to understand that not everything right now is excellently suited for an agent. Uh, but be patient, because it's definitely coming. So if your agents suck, here's the good news. You're not broken. The tools aren't secretly terrible. We're all learning here. This is, this is a process that's going to take time, and it's a new way of thinking about problems as you deal with them, especially as non-technicals. Um, so you want to really go into this with an open mind and think more than just diving in and building things, because I think that little bit of thought and planning can really take you a long way. Agents fail because we keep handing them intentions instead of clear instructions. Uh, we need to make sure we don't confuse volume with clarity. Uh, we need to make sure that our context that we give them is super clear and valuable to the end task. You don't want to overlook that step. And if there's one thing to take away from today here, agents don't fail because they're dumb. They fail because we keep asking them to act on things we've never clearly explained even to ourselves. So sit down, think a little bit about your process. Next time I want to talk about why plain old chat works better than agents for most real work, honestly, and why that makes everyone uncomfortable for some reason. Because once you see it, you kind of can't unsee it. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next time.